A man achieves his dream job as a high society layer, but becomes conflicted after realizing that his beloved boss is the devil himself. But before we get into this movie recap, where do you turn in from? In a courtroom, a Floridian lawyer named Kevin prepares to defend his client, a teacher who is accused of serious offenses by female students. As one of the girls gives her testimony, Kevin realizes that Lloyd, his client, is in fact guilty through his behavior. This realization affects Kevin greatly, and he can't help but feel an overwhelming sense of anger. When the judge invites Kevin to begin his defense, Kevin requests a brief recess to reorganize his thoughts. He takes his job incredibly seriously, never having lost a case, but feels extremely conflicted now, knowing his client is a monster. Unsure of what to do, Kevin argues with Lloyd, calling him out for being guilty before storming off to the bathroom. Kevin's reporter friend, Larry, joins him in the bathroom and teases him, claiming that today is the day he loses his first case. Kevin retorts sharply and returns to the court with renewed determination. During his defense, he confuses a young girl by cross-examination and speaks loudly to throw her off. This allows Kevin and Lloyd to win the case by securing a not guilty verdict. He later celebrates another victorious case at a bar with his wife, Mary, and some friends. At the bar, Kevin is approached by Heath, a representative from a highly regarded law firm in New York City. Heath introduces himself to Kevin and asks for his help with jury selection for a case in New York City. Initially, Kevin is dismissive, thinking the man is joking, but he graciously accepts the man's offer once Heath shows him the check. The following day, Kevin meets with his mother, Alice, at church to inform her of the job opportunity in New York. Alice isn't thrilled at the thought of her son moving so far away and implies Mary is somehow responsible. However, Kevin sways her when she sees how proud and excited her son is and wishes him luck. Kevin and Mary fly to New York soon, and Kevin diligently puts together a jury that leads to another successful not guilty verdict. When Kevin returns home to a luxury apartment, he tells Mary about the verdict and the two celebrate by jumping for joy. The next day, Kevin is invited to meet John one of the founders of the firm. Kevin is immediately intimidated by John's presence and directness. He asks Kevin several questions about Lloyd's case, and Kevin answers all of them honestly, in turn impressing John. John invites Kevin up to the top of the firm building to witness the incredible view before offering him a job. Kevin eagerly accepts, and he and Mary permanently move to a beautiful apartment in Manhattan. Heath and his wife Jackie live in the same building and on the same floor. They show Kevin and Mary around their new home and give them a warm welcome. Mary is ecstatic and in awe of the home's size, while Kevin pulls her aside to question her certainty about moving. Mary assures Kevin that she's ready for this new chapter in their life hoping that his new job will mean the financial stability needed to have a baby. Kevin begins work early the very next day and is introduced to the entire office. Kevin quickly realizes how much work this new job will be and is immediately assigned a case involving a health code violation. He spends more time at work and barely sees Mary in the following weeks. Alone and at home for most of her time, Mary quickly finds herself bored and unfulfilled. She's used to working and has to find things to do around the house to keep herself occupied. Mary befriends Jackie as she is in a similar position, and the two spend more time together. After working tirelessly for days, Kevin wins the case for his defendant, gaining much praise for John. As thanks for a job well done, John invites Kevin and Mary to a high society party that night. Mary is nervous when getting ready as she doesn't want to negatively impact Kevin's career by making a bad impression on the socialites. Kevin assures Mary that he will be with her throughout the entire night, but at the party, Kevin is quickly swept away by his colleagues. With Kevin out of the picture, John takes an interest in Mary. He approaches her and they spend time together. John comments on Mary's appearance, specifically her hair, and convinces her to change her hairstyle after some careful suggestions. Meanwhile, Kevin struggles to resist approaching his incredibly beautiful co-worker, Christabella, and can't help but join her when he finds her alone on the terrace. Mary begins looking for Kevin, but before she can find him, he's called to John's office. Once there, Kevin and John are joined by Heath and the firm's managing director, Eddie. John informs them all that a very long-time client and known billionaire, Alex Cullen, is being accused of the murder of his wife, son, and maid. John assigns the case to Kevin shocking everyone. Eddie is extremely confused and argues with John as he has handled all of Alex's cases in the past. However, John doesn't budge and simply tells Kevin not to slack. Kevin immediately begins reading up on the case, 
and when he returns home, he has to face Mary, who's very upset at being left alone at the party. Kevin tries to explain himself, but Mary is too angry to care. The next day, Kevin and John meet with Alex when he makes bail. Alex questions who Kevin is and John tells him that Kevin is his new lawyer and will be handling Alex's case. Alex berates John for taking such a serious case lightly by assigning it to Kevin, who he believes is too young and inexperienced. John assures Alex that despite his age, Kevin is the best lawyer money can buy. This convinces Alex, and he simply warns Kevin to live up to John's kind words. In the city, Mary goes shopping with Jackie and Diana, Eddie's wife, after changing her hair to what John suggested at the party. However, while trying on dresses with the other women, Mary has a disturbing vision of Jackie's face warping in a monstrous manner. Without a word, Mary gets up and leaves, leaving Jackie and Diana very confused. At home, Mary insults and shouts at Kevin for not believing what she saw. Kevin instead suggests the sudden and drastic life changes are affecting her, noting her hair. However, Kevin's words only upset Mary further. She breaks down and pleads with Kevin to move back to Florida with her. Kevin reminds her of the amount of money he earns at his new job, but Mary is uninterested and asserts that they can make do with less money. Seeing how upset his wife is, Kevin hugs Mary while planning to have a baby to keep her company. At work, Kevin begins his intensive preparation for Alex's trial, spending even less time with Mary as a result. Soon though, Alice visits Kevin in New York. Alice gets swarmed by photographers when she arrives and has a very strange interaction with John when they cross paths. In a cramped elevator, Mary notices odd looks exchanged between Kevin and Christabella, leading her to believe that she and Kevin are having an affair. The very next morning, as Kevin prepares to leave for work, Alice tells him she's going back home. She admits she's worried about Mary and advises them to move back to Florida. Kevin immediately refuses, so Alice simply tells Kevin to pay more attention to his wife before leaving. At work, Kevin talks to Alex's assistant and is thrilled to find an alibi, because Alex was being intimate with his assistant during the time of the murders. As Kevin prepares to leave work, he's stopped by John who has tickets to a wrestling match. Kevin is hesitant, wanting to get home to Mary, but he accepts John's extra ticket. While traveling on the subway, John begins intentionally antagonizing a random passenger. When the antagonized man pulls out a knife, John stops him by revealing a dark secret of the strangers, shocking Kevin. While watching the match, Kevin is called away by a phone call from Mary. Mary asks Kevin where he is and is furious to learn he's watching a wrestling match. Kevin apologizes but retorts that he couldn't simply turn his boss down, wanting to stay on his good side. Kevin returns to his table with John while Mary goes to bed alone. Mary has a shocking nightmare about a baby playing with her removed inner organs. Kevin gets home late and Mary is quick to regale him with her awful nightmare. Kevin tries to be sympathetic and reminds Mary that it was just a dream, but she insists it was something more, implying that the dream is going to become reality. She reveals that a doctor recently diagnosed her with ovarian failure, meaning she is infertile. She expects Kevin to leave her for this reason, but he only comforts her with a tender hug, professing his love for her. The moment is interrupted by a work call scheduling for Kevin to meet with Alex first thing in the morning. Upon meeting with Alex, Kevin learns that Alex was in fact with his assistant at the time of the murders, engaged in an affair. John and Kevin speak later, and after hearing about Mary's condition, John suggests Kevin back down from the case and spend more time with his wife. However, Kevin refuses, stating that he doesn't want to eventually grow to resent Mary for making him miss out on winning such a massive case. When the trial begins, Kevin takes an untraditional approach to a defense. He paints Alex as a generally unkind and ethically questionable billionaire, but not a murderer. Kevin posits that Alex would have no motive for committing such heinous acts, and he mentions his alibi. The trial's verdict is ambiguous for the time being. After work, Eddie approaches Kevin on the street. Eddie appears angry and accuses Kevin of trying to steal his job. This sudden and unprompted confrontation confuses Kevin, but Eddie clears things up by revealing that he saw Kevin's name on the firm charter. Kevin doesn't know about what Eddie is suggesting and denies having any knowledge. However, Eddie remains firm in the fact that Kevin is trying to steal his job and threatens to inform the authorities of the firm's illegal activities if Kevin doesn't learn his place. 
Unsure of what to do, Kevin sees John and tells him about the troubling interaction he had with Eddie. This concerns John, and he asks his assistant to get in touch with Eddie and ask him to come see him. Meanwhile, while running through a park, Eddie is attacked and beaten to death by a group of homeless men with demonic auras. While preparing Alex's assistant to testify, Kevin realizes she is actually lying about Alex's alibi, shocking Kevin. Once again, he feels conflicted, similar to the case with Lloyd. Outraged, Kevin storms out of the meeting only to run into Diana, who tells Kevin of Eddie's sudden death. Kevin tries to comfort her, but appears to suspect foul play. During the subway ride to the court case, Kevin tells John that he believes Alex is guilty and intentionally setting him up to fail. John is dismissive but asks Kevin what he will do. Kevin tells John that he will do his best to win the case regardless, to keep his flawless record. During the trial, Kevin still uses Alex's assistant to give the false testimony, concluding the case with a verdict labeling Alex as not guilty. After the trial, Kevin is informed of Mary's worsening condition and rushes to her side in a church. He finds Mary wrapped in a blanket, sobbing in the church. He asks her what the matter is, and she reveals that John assaulted her. Kevin can't believe her words and asks when this occurred. Mary tells him that the entire afternoon she was assaulted, and Kevin refuses to consider that a possibility as John was with him the whole day. Mary pleads for Kevin to believe her and drops the blanket, revealing cuts all over her naked body. Kevin is horrified, believing Mary to have lost her mind and somehow hurt herself. Kevin quickly admits Mary to a mental hospital where she's sedated. He tries to comfort her as she's taken away, but she tells Kevin that terrible things are happening because of the blood money associated with his new job and begs him to take her back to Florida. While paying respects at Eddie's funeral, Kevin experiences strange hallucinations, seeing both Lloyd and Alex among the crowd. Kevin leaves later and is approached by an agent who has been investigating Kevin's firm for illegal activity. Kevin ignores the man and continues walking, but the man asks for Kevin's assistance in uncovering the full extent of the firm's crimes. In exchange, Kevin will be pardoned and receive no punishment. Kevin refuses to have any part in what the man is suggesting, but he remains determined. He tells Kevin that Lloyd was recently arrested for having a 10-year-old girl's body in his car. He implores Kevin to not make the same mistake, but before he can finish, he's hit by a car and immediately killed. Kevin visits Mary, only to find Alice already there. Kevin tries to speak to Mary, but she is in a catatonic state. This concerns Kevin greatly, and Alice decides to distract her son by taking him out of the room to be honest about his father. She is insistent on telling Kevin the truth, but he stops her, explaining that her timing is awful. As the two argue, Pam, Mary's nurse, shows her her reflection in a hand mirror in hopes of lifting her spirits. However, Mary has a hallucination of Pam's face, morphing in the same way Jackie's did. She screams and attacks Pam with the mirror. After hearing the commotion, Kevin and Alice are quick to run back to Mary's room, only to find that she's already barricaded the door. Kevin tries to break in as Mary picks up a piece of the mirror and uses it to end herself. Kevin is helpless and can only hold his wife's lifeless body as he breaks down. Once it's over, Kevin asks his mother to finish the story about his father, feeling numb from the shock. She reveals that John is actually Kevin's father after she first met him in New York many years ago. She apologizes for not telling him after running into John at Kevin's apartment and explains that she didn't want to make him think he only got the position he did because he is the boss's son. Kevin begins walking away, but Alice follows him, begging him to come back to Florida with her. Kevin coldly refuses and leaves the building. When he gets outside, he's shocked and confused to find that not a single person or car is in the street. Kevin decides to go see John and confront him. John openly admits that he assaulted Mary, prompting Kevin to pull out a weapon and shoot John multiple times. This only amuses John, however, as the bullets have no effect. John then enthusiastically explains that he can't be hurt or killed because he's the devil. Kevin immediately understands that Mary was somehow aware of this detail for some time and tried to explain it to him, so John killed her. Kevin blames John for the turn his life has taken, but John reminds Kevin that he had multiple opportunities to leave and do the right thing but chose not to because he wanted to win at everything he did, no matter the cost. Kevin remains silent at John's words, and John admits that vanity is his favorite sin. Christabella enters the room, and John reveals that she's his half-sister. John then explains that his grand plan is to keep the business in the family by having Kevin and Christabella take over the firm. Additionally, he wants them to get married and conceive the true Antichrist. He adds that it's only a fair trade as he is the cause of every good thing that ever came about in Kevin's life. Kevin hesitantly seems to agree, 
and Christabella eagerly removes her clothes. Kevin and Christabella kiss and begin an intimate moment. But before things escalate, Kevin shoots himself, refusing to give John his way. John screams in anger, engulfing the room and himself in flames. Christabella spontaneously dies, and John takes on his true form, an angel that looks exactly like Kevin. Suddenly, Kevin finds himself in the bathroom during the recess at Lloyd's trial. Confused, Kevin returns to the courtroom and sees Mary. He rushes to her and kisses her before the trial continues. As the judge calls for Kevin to present his defense, he stands and announces that he wishes to withdraw from the trial, causing the entire court to erupt with questions. Mary hugs Kevin and asks him what he's doing, to which he simply replies the right thing. As the two exit, the courtroom reporters pursue Kevin, but he refuses their questions. Larry begs Kevin to meet with him the next day to get his story. Kevin is unsure, but Mary convinces him, and he agrees to let Larry interview him. When the couple leave, however, Larry turns into John, and he asserts that vanity is his favorite sin. Would you have accepted John's offer to run the firm, or would you have helped the agent instead? Let us know down below.